Now we all know it's important to go to the dentist and yet we still put it off. Most of us only go when something's already happened, but prevention really is the key when it comes to looking after those choppers. Today we're learning what you can do to improve your dental hygiene, here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living, and the good just gets better, keeps on giving, not even close to the end, it's just beginning, life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah, and it's a good, I won't even worry anymore, to call my care, still can kick them all out the door, go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for, move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. Today's episode is all about dental hygiene and teeth whitening. We all know that our dental health is important, but you know what? Why don't we always know what we should be doing? Today I want to chat with Dr. Medin. Now he's my personal dentist and he's a great dental and oral health expert about how to keep your smile in tip-top shape. Welcome to the show, Dr. Medin. How are you? Oh, thank you. I'm doing fine. Good. What is dental hygiene? Let's well, get cracking. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dental hygiene is actually starts at home uh, just uh, for someone taking care of their daily habits, dental habits, which is just brushing the teeth, flossing, and using a bath rinse. Yeah. What are some of the techniques? Well, the best one is just plain brushing your teeth. Okay, you've often said to me, because I come to you as my dentist, yeah. do you floss? I don't floss. Yeah, people should and floss. And I know you get cross with me. Yeah, people should floss at least once a day. Why? I just, hate it. Just to break the contact between teeth, and that's where some of the food particles would But doesn't my toothbrush do that? No, the toothbrush does not go in between the teeth. It goes into surrounding tissues, but it would not break the contact. Okay, when people aren't brushing their teeth, it causes discoloration. Why does it cause discoloration? Well, it causes discoloration because you remember, you're not removing any excess of food particles that you have in your mouth, so they are actually attaching to your enamel. Is everyone born with the same color teeth? No, we all not born with the same color teeth. Some people have, you know, they have lighter teeth than others. So when a mother's pregnant, what should she avoid to help her children's teeth later in life? Well, one of the things that you should avoid is uh, that we call tetracycline. It's an antibiotic. And the tetracycline usually tends to stain teeth in a permanent way. So then we have dark lines going across the teeth. And that's, those are really, really, really hard to remove even by uh, tooth whitening agents like bleaching teeth. Mm. Uh, it, it, takes many times to actually bleach those teeth. How often should someone be visiting you to actually have your teeth cleaned? Because dental hygiene also is about cleaning the teeth professionally. Yeah, someone to be professionally have the teeth clean at least twice a year, mm -hmm. uh, every six months. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is fluoride cleaning? Because people say, oh, do you want fluoride put on your teeth? Now we actually place this fluoride that is, goes more intrinsic and it stays within the enamel. It goes in, from the enamel to, toward the dentin area where the tooth is in the inside part of the tooth. Mm. And it stays there for a long period of time, therefore protecting the teeth for any future cavities. Dr. Madden, one of the most common causes of teeth discoloration is what we eat. Let's take a look at some of the foods that cause this. Many things can cause discoloration of the teeth. Some stains are extrinsic, meaning they are only on the surface of the teeth. Red wine has substances known as chromogens in it that produces a tooth discoloring pigment. It also has tannins that dry out the mouth, making the teeth sticky and worsening the stains. White wine can also cause staining because of the erosive acidity in it, allowing stains to penetrate more deeply. Coffee stains, of course, are the most resistant to the teeth brushing and teeth are more likely to become discoloured again. Black tea can be worse than coffee because it's high in tannin content, but green, white and herbal teas won't stain your teeth. Uh, well, I brush. I floss every now and again. I'm not actually huge into teeth care. I really should be. I just use toothpaste and sometimes baking soda. That's about it. 
Um, besides brushing my teeth and mouthwash and floss, I like to use baking soda and strawberries and mixing that together for whitening my teeth. For teeth whitening, I don't know, like I just use the like my Listerine and <laughs> brush my teeth every day and night. I honestly don't remember last time I went to the dentist. Usually every six months unless there's something else that's more, you know, needed. <laughs> every six months. I only have to go once a year. See, my grandpa has all of his teeth, like just he did, never took care of his teeth, he smoked, so like he has like big gaps in his teeth, and I really don't want that to happen. Losing any of my teeth, I don't want to lose them. Have, having to have one pulled. Just cavities and like gingivitis or something. Probably getting root canals because it affects more than just your teeth, it affects your wellness in general. Coming up after the break, we're going to be talking to the folks over there at Ultra Dent about their opalescence teeth whitening system. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to Dr. Madden about what causes teeth discoloration and how you can prevent it. But what if it's already too late for prevention? I'm here at the Ultradent offices to talk about their Opalescence Professional Teeth Whitening Options. Hey Shalise, how are you? Good, how are you? Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about Opalescence Boost. So this is our in-office professional whitening treatment. So it's just chair side, you go into your dentist office and the whole process is about an hour start to finish. Okay, so why is that different going to the dentist to actually have that done adverse to buying one over the counter, say at a supermarket or a drugstore? So the difference is just the duration of time mm -hmm. that it's gonna take you to get as white as you want. Okay, so when I was telling people that I was coming over to talk about teeth whitening professionally, and they said to me, they said, you know, Troy, we can get that so much cheaper when we go online. And when I Googled it, uh, some of the products are like $20, $30. What's the dangers of buying it from eBay and internet services? Well, the first thing is you, you want to go through your dentist because you want to make sure that your teeth are healthy enough to whiten. You don't want to buy a product online maybe and then be in pain. And the other difference is you want to make sure that you're getting fresh product. When you buy it online, you don't know if it's expired. You have oh. no idea how fresh it is. And if you go through your dentist, you're getting what you paid for. How often should you be actually having this done? This is a one-time treatment, so it starts one to finish. One-off deal, done, finished, dusted. Well, you know, everyone, if you drink a lot of red wine or coffee, yeah. maybe a couple years down the road, you're gonna want to touch up, and you could do an at-home treatment for that, but this is going to get you where you want to be. Okay, let's take a quick look at the video of how this procedure actually works. <laughs> Opalescence Boost is a professional tooth whitening product that is applied only in a dental office by a licensed professional. Before applying the product, your dentist will apply a resin barrier around your gum line. Once your gums are protected, your dentist can start applying the Opalescence Boost to your teeth. The gel will sit for 20 minutes and then it'll be suctioned off. After looking at your new shade, your dentist will decide if the gel needs to be applied for a second time. Because the gel starts working immediately upon application, the results are fast, often giving you amazing results in less than an hour. Let's talk about Opalescence Go. What sets this product apart? This product is all about convenience and about that on-the-go person that wants something quick and easy. It's a half hour to 15 minute wear time depending on the really? concentration that you get. Yes. And you don't need custom trades. You put it in your mouth and it forms to your teeth. Okay. This special material, it's called our Ultra Fit Tray. And as it warms up in your mouth, it gives you that custom like fit and feel okay. and amazing results. So from the dentist though, this is not over the counter. Yes. You can't buy it at supermarkets. All of our whitening is, we, we say professional whitening, it's through your dentist just so that your teeth are in good condition and so that you get the results that you want. Okay, so once you've bought it, from the dentist, how often should you be actually whitening your teeth? So we say you can do one tray every day, but mm. everyone's different, so if you're feeling a little sensitive or if you wanna take a day off in between, that's totally fine. So one size fits all, it's yes. easy. Yeah, the, the material on the tray adapts to your teeth, so if you have a you know, a wider bite or a uh -huh. more narrow bite, it's gonna to form to the teeth Several and give flavors, you, you molar said. to molar. Yes, mint, melon, and peach. Okay, which one have I got? So that's the mint. Uh huh. And you're just gonna put it in and give a little kiss. Mm. Grab that outer tray. Yes. And remove it. Oh my lord, that is so easy. 
while I'm bleaching my teeth, head over and have a look at this little video. Opalescence Go is ready to use right from the package. Start by removing the Opalescence Go tray from the package, then insert the tray by centering it in on the upper or lower arch. Suck down or swallow in order to secure the tray to your teeth. Once the tray is secured, you can remove the coloured outer tray. This product should be used once a day for 30 to 60 minutes and should give you a brilliant result in 5 to 10 days. So we're on to our third product here. It's called Opalescence PF. What does that mean? It stands for potassium nitrate and fluoride. And okay. what it is, is it helps to reduce sensitivity and make your whitening experience more comfortable. And it's also been shown to strengthen the enamel of the teeth. Okay. So it's just another good reason to go to your dentist for whitening. Not all whitener has this ingredient. And this is actually in all of our whitening gels. Okay, all of your products have a whitening gel. What is a whitening gel and why is it better for us to use? Well, Ultradent pioneered whitening gel with opalescence okay. 24 years ago. And the reason that a gel is important and the reason that it works so well is because the more sticky and viscous it is, the better it stays in contact with your teeth. And the longer the gel is in contact with your teeth, the okay. better the result. Thank you so much, Shalise. We've put together a little video on how this product actually works. Take a quick look. Before using Opalescence PF, your dentist will make custom-made trays for you by making an impression of your teeth first. Once your trays are made, you'll start whitening by inserting a continuous line of whitening gel into the tray. You will then need to gently insert the trays into your mouth and use a toothbrush to wipe off any excess gel from your gums. Your dentist will recommend the length of time to leave the tray in. Once it is removed, make sure to brush both your teeth and your tray to remove the excess whitening gel. When we come back, Dr. Medden and myself will be chatting all about why it's so important that you go to the dentist on a regular basis. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. I know going to the dentist isn't something anyone looks forward to, but a lot of things can go wrong when you don't check in with your dentist often. Let's go talk to Dr. Madden and see what he has to say. A lot of people are scared to come to the dentist, Dr. Madden. So things like gum disease and gingivitis come about because of poor IG. Is that correct? Yeah. Now, one of the key questions, or one of the key situations here is that a lot of people don't realize it. Don't realize that they have any gum disease. And what I see is gum disease? Gum disease starts with poor oral hygiene. Yes. Okay, that's a start with. I get that. Yeah. What's the first sign that you have gum disease? The first sign is gingivitis. What is gingivitis? Is that when the gums bleed? When the gums tend to bleed at gingivitis stage. That's uh, when you know you've got gingivitis? Correct. Does that cause bad breath? Yes. Okay, so bad breath, gums bleeding, could mean you might have gingivitis. Well, it does mean that you have gingivitis at that point. Ah. If someone at home is watching this right now and their teeth are bleeding, their gums, I should say, mm -hmm. and their breath smells, you're not going to get rid of gingivitis by using a mouthwash. No. You need to get to the dentist. Yes. And what you... do you need to ask the dentist? Well, first of all, they have to be honest and say how, when was the last time they actually visited a dental office yeah. or had a cleaning done. Then we evaluate the patient and see if in fact, how was the cleaning taking place? Mm. Sometimes the, the tartar is built up underneath the gums. So you cannot actually see we it. We don't know that. Yeah, you Only don't know you that. know that. Correct. Yeah. So we had to take some measurements, some we call periodontal probing. Ah. So, therefore we could find out and map out all the whole mouth right. and see where, what are the areas. Because so there are patients that don't have an entire mouth having problems. There could be some areas some isolated areas Got that you. they actually have in the problems. And you actually said to me once, um, I had some of my gum that was leaving my tooth area deeper than others. Is that part of gingivitis or a different scenario? That goes into the early stages of periodontitis. Which is the next step, the next step from gingivitis. Correct. Tell us about that, explain that part for us. First of all, the, the, the dentist, the doctor, or the hygienist in, in some cases, just take some measurements with mm. the periodontal problem, 
and they, they find out what the measurements are on each patient, on that patient, and map out the whole mouth. Mm. So once we see that, we see what type of uh, problems they have in, then we qualify them into you know, type one, type two, type three, you know, uh, periodontitis, or, or they might just have the gingivitis. What are you doing to treat it? We do rippling and scaling, which is then we go below the period, the, below well, the gum painful. level. that sounds painful. Yeah, it sounds painful. In those stages, we actually, the patient should be anesthetized just because it's You knock them out. Uncomfortable. Yeah. But you don't know. No. You didn't get we that. Just lock, lock you just lock them You're just local anesthetic. Yeah, you don't have okay. to knock them out. <laughs> okay. Is there any connection between gum disease and cavities? That was a question that our viewer wrote in to us. There is a connection. The connection is because, just remember, the patients that they have the gum disease, what's the result? They're not flossing. They're mm. not doing their oral hygiene at home. You know, they're not flossing, they're not brushing. Therefore, there's a great chance that a cavity starts at that point. So there is a connection mm. uh, in, in, in such a way because okay. of the poor oral hygiene. Speaking about cavities, I want to take a moment to break down some of the most common myths about cavities. Take a look. Is sugar the prime cause of cavities? Well, that's a myth but it's almost a fact. Acid produced by bacteria in your mouth is the cause of cavities. Carbohydrates such as sugar trigger the bacteria to make acid causing cavities. Exposure to acidic foods cause tooth decay. Well, that's a fact. Acidic foods such as lemons, citrus juices, or soft drinks don't cause cavities, but they may be putting your enamel in danger. If you have a cavity, you'll know it. Well, that's a myth as well. Mild tooth decay doesn't cause symptoms. The pain we associate with cavities comes from when the tooth decay is more advanced and causes damage to the nerve. Dr. Madden, a lot of people suffer from sensitive teeth. Why is that? The ones that I see the most is when there's uh, the gums, the gum line is starts receding, and therefore that's where the enamel ends and they're part of the root stars, which is called cementum, it's, it, that's mm. the clinical term. Um, that area is exposed and they start having a lot of sensitivity. Some people have sensitivity just because they have grinded the teeth so bad uh, for so many years, uh, they have all the problems, so therefore the teeth start becoming quite sensitive because they have removed a lot of the enamel. So having sensitive teeth, does that cause other issues in the mouth? It causes problems because obviously this, the patient is quite sensitive in some areas and you cannot really do some things like, a, like for example, tooth, you know, teeth bleaching. Mm. Uh, the patient may not be a high candidate just mm. because of there's a lot of uh, sensitivity in the mouth. What do you do to treat sensitive teeth? There are some products that we could use that they have highly fluoridated products that actually would uh, help on remove the sensitivity of the teeth and it really does help a lot. Do you know what steps you should be taking in order to maintain that perfectly beautiful smile? Dr. Medin and myself will be talking all about it coming up next. Check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show, read about our product of the week and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. Before the break we talked about some of the common problems that come along with poor dental hygiene. Now, Dr. Medin and myself are going to show you the products you should be using in order to avoid any of those pesky problems. What is the clinical term for bad breath? It's called halitosis. Okay, what can you do apart from scraping the tongue, brushing your teeth, can you do to fix that? Well, there's some products that we have that the uh, mouth rinses. Okay. And remember, some of the problems that are created from halitosis it comes out from patients having other issues. Well, stomach problems. Ah, you know, some other issues. That bad they diet. Actually, yeah, bad diet. Bad diet. Oh, you um, ate too much garlic the night before. Correct. <laughs> the main cause of bad breath is bacteria in your mouth. It is important to brush all areas of your mouth, including the roof, gums, and back of the tongue. It is necessary to floss because food left in your teeth causes decaying, leading to bad breath. Avoid drinking alcohol, eating odorous foods such as onions, and smoking if you want to keep your fresh breath. Drink plenty of water, which helps the mouth salivate, and saliva helps flush out the bacteria. Now, we've talked about dental cleaning, and they should be coming in to see you, what, twice a year? Yes. Okay. There are so many toothpastes out there. How do you know which is the right one? 
Okay, when a patient comes into uh, my, my practice, either myself or the hygienist would actually talk to them and see what type of teeth they have. Because the type of teeth they have, it beca- it, there's, there's a lot of that that we, they should be using a, a given toothpaste. Oh, I didn't know that. So certain teeth, certain toothpaste. Correct. Just to give an example, um, you know, this broad example is, uh, let's say a, a patient smoker, heavy smoker, mm. heavy coffee drinker. Okay. Most of those patients usually, they tend to go into a toothpaste that is more, a little bit more abrasive and a little bit more uh, have tooth whitening into yeah. the product. Yeah. So they could do, they, they could keep those teeth of kind of lighter. Of course. Um, a patient that had veneers, for example. Mm. Okay. And we're not going to put the patient or, uh, or advise the patient to use a toothpaste like that because it's going to create some damage or micro abrasion oh. to some of the teeth. So, and that's one thing that I see sometimes that patients, when I ask them those questions, they don't realize that there's, there's such a difference. It's not one toothpaste fits all. That the kind gotcha. of situation. We've talked about toothpaste. Yes. There's double the amount of floss mm-hmm. out there. Waxed, unwaxed, minted, unminted. Yeah, the wax, it becomes kind of a preference. It's easier for the patient to floss. Um, one thing that patients, when they floss, they should really go over um, with the hygienist or the dentist in this case and, and see which is the best. In my case, you know, we tell the patients how they should floss and show them the way to floss. Okay, all the toothbrushes. There are so many different brands, so many different soft, medium, hard, electric, unelectric, vibrating. There's just too many to choose yeah. from. I want you to tell me the worst type of toothbrush to use. Well, the worst one would be a the bristles to be either medium or hard, even though they work in the teeth well, but they start causing a lot of abrasions. Some patients, the other problem is that, and I see this, you have no idea how many times I have asked patients to show me the way they brush, because I want to see the way they brush, not me telling them first. Well, it's that's just, important. Ju- that's important because most of them, I would say a good 80% of the patients would, are not brushing the right way. Okay. Give me the best mechanical toothbrush. The best mechanical toothbrush is one that has a combination of soft bristles and medium bristles. Yes. Okay. And some of them, they have different angles. So therefore, it helps the patient achieve the cleaning in a better manner. Before we go, Dr. Madden, how young should you be when you first start coming to a dentist? Well, the... First visit is when they are quite uh, young, um, two or three years old. Really that uh, early? The reason is, is mostly, you got to remember that everything is education, okay? These kids need to be educated, okay? And the fear, the, the, the factor of So you got to be fear, gentle. Yeah, you have to, you, you pretty much you break them in first. Yeah. You're not going to do really anything much, but you break them in, you're showing them how they should be brushing, okay? And you actually show all and the mom, how she should be brushing these kids. Because and teaching Remember, them. the mom is actually exactly. doing this, this work for them. They're not actually brushing themselves at that point. Dr. Madden, great information. I'm glad yeah. we did this today. Thank you so much. Confidence is a key to creating a youthful appearance, but it is hard to be confident when you aren't happy with your smile. So make sure you are doing everything you can to keep your teeth white, your gums healthy, and your smile glowing. For more information about Dr. Madden or myself and the TV show, head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Next time on The Younger You, the fat will be frozen away with cool sculpting, and then we will find out a way to bring balance back into your life with bioidentical hormone treatments. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.